Hi, thanks for joining me. I'm Chris Rowan, founder and CTO of Tensilica. I'm going to show you just how simple it is to configure a processor core for your system on chip application. I'm going to use the Extensa Explorer interface, which allows the designer to select and evaluate every choice about processors quickly and easily. So this Explorer interface gives us the ability to open up a processor configuration from scratch and then to use these different panels to select or describe each of the important aspects, the instruction set, the memories, the interfaces, the interrupt control for that particular processor core to ensure that it has everything that you need and nothing extra. That means that you have the smallest, lowest power processor, yet full flexibility within your application to program it to achieve high throughput and high functionality. So this panel is going to allow us to configure things like instructions. Down below here, we have the estimation view, which gives us a quick picture of the speed in megahertz, the core size in square millimeters, the power in milliwatts, and the total area of the processor core plus its memories. Over here, we have a menu of all the different configurations that we have available or may be creating for our system on chip application. And up here, we have all of the different C applications that we may want to create and run on the cores that we're creating here. So the Explorer interface has everything that you need for both hardware and software development of processor-based platforms. Now let's look at what we want to do with our instruction set. We may know that this application does a lot of arithmetic operations with perhaps 16-bit multiplies. So we'll add a 16-bit multiplier. We may also know that there are 32-bit multiplies. And I'm going to add a fast, fully pipelined 32-bit multiplier to my hardware. And uh, I may know that there's a lot of loops. And I want to make sure that no cycles are lost in executing these uh, computationally intensive sections of code. And I'm going to add extra instructions that implement zero overhead loops. And as you can see, as I add and remove the zero overhead loop, I slightly change the size of the core and its power and its total area. So I can get an exact feel for the costs and the benefits of different choices in processor configuration. Now I may want to look at the memories and bus interface for my processor. So I may say, well, first, I want to have some instruction caches. So I'm going to add here, for example, 16K of instruction cache. And in fact, I may choose to say, I want a two-way associative instruction cache for better performance and efficiency. I may want 32K of data cache. And that, too, I might make two-way set associative. In addition to the caches, I may decide I also want some local memories that I can access uh, in a single cycle. And I may add 32K of local instruction uh, memory and uh, maybe, um, let's say, 64K of tightly coupled data memory. Of course, part of building the optimal processor is being able to communicate with other subsystems on the chip. I could start with a generic processor interface, but I may want to extend its functionality to include AHB or AXI uh, capability. And that's directly incorporated just by selecting that interface uh, on the menu. Next, I may be thinking about what kinds of interactions with other subsystems may be driven by interrupts. So I can come and select the kind of interrupt control that I want. I may have uh, a need for, let's say, 16 different interrupts in my system uh, across uh, different priority levels. And now I can uh, describe how many uh, timers I want. I can allocate them to 
uh, different uh, levels here. I can uh, uh, implement uh, level triggered interrupts, edge triggered interrupts, software interrupts. I can allocate all of my interrupts to different priority levels. I have complete flexibility over the size and functionality of my interrupt controller as well, all with the click of a mouse. So what I've done is quickly configured uh, the instruction set, the memories, the bus interface, the interrupt controller, the timers for my processor core. Next, let's look quickly at how the tool tells us about the impact of process technology choices. So I can select a characterization of this kind of a processor across a wide range of different process technologies. Here, for example, I've uh, been using a 90 nanometer low power process, but I may want more performance, so I may say, well, let me step up to a 90G process. And you can see that the target clock frequency goes up. I can now go to 300 megahertz quite easily with this kind of a processor. I can even step up to, say, a 65 nanometer process. And for this configuration, now I'm uh, between 400 and 500 megahertz performance for my core. In fact, I can even look directly at the trade-offs between area and performance between power and performance. By lowering the estimated clock frequency of the processor, meeting the performance becomes easier for the logic. The logic gets smaller, the power goes down, and the total area required uh, is reduced as well. So I have an opportunity to adjust the instruction set and memory to get performance and to adjust the process technology to get the best possible set of trade-offs. And that's all it takes. I can now just save my configuration, and then I can simply do a, a build of this processor with my set of instructions and my selection of memories and interfaces and my selection of interrupt control features, knowing that it has everything that I need and no excess baggage. And in a few minutes, this build will generate the complete source level RTL, the complete simulation models, will build real-time operating systems automatically adapted to this configuration. It will build a compiler that automatically recognizes all of the features of my particular processor and allows me to quickly develop new applications I can come back and change the processor as I learn more about the trade-offs in my applications. And so I can quickly create each of the processors I need with world-class performance for control tasks, for signal processing tasks, for audio, for video, for every kind of function. I have the choices available and complete control at low risk because the cores are automatically verified and are complete just from this very simple selection of features that you saw me work through just now. So thanks very much, and enjoy building these processors.